Greetings, Pilgrims. Welcome back to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today, we are continuing with our Ready Player Me avatar creation integration process. So, last time, you saw me create my avatar here. I showed you all about how you can set all of your options here. So, now today, we're going to talk about how to go from here into Unity, okay? So, first things first, this is a brand new blank project. There's absolutely nothing in this project. All I did was go to the Unity Hub and said create new project, and I called it 3D standard 3D project. We're not doing URP or HDRP, none of that. And I called it Ready Player Me Tutorials, so that's all it is. And I clicked go and it's done, okay? So you can see there's nothing here. We're gonna do this all from scratch together. All right, so here's my character and he's all done. So what I'm gonna do is click next, and this is gonna take me to the final screen where it shows the nice little render of my character and then it has this link so we're going to need this link okay so i'm going to click copy and that should be okay to stay in my queue here but if not we can come back to it okay it's right here at the bottom it just got pushed down by all this since it rendered my handsome self right there so we're going to leave that link right there we'll come back to that link so to get our character into unity we have to install what's called the unity avatar sdk so SDK, if you're not familiar, stands for a Software Development Kit. It's really just a fancy word for here's the thing that this company made, in this case Wolf 3D, made this thing that's sort of like a plugin to Unity. It is a plugin, there's several plugins, and it allows you to take to go from their stuff to Unity stuff. That's all. So it's a software development kit. It allows you to create software, and it's a kit. It's a kit of tools that allows you to make that transition. So, how do we get to this? Okay, so if you go to the main website, so I'll, I'll redo it here to show you. So I go to the main website here, and at the top here under Docs, I'm gonna click that, and then down here on the right, left, pardon me, I'm gonna say Unity Avatar SDK, click that, and this first link here, Unity Avatar SDK Download. So let's click that. There we go. Now we're right back here where we were. So Unity Avatar SDK Download, latest release, download the latest release below, and that's right here. So if you click this, you'll download it. I've already done that, and you can see it's right here, my downloads folder. Here it is, Ready Player Me Unity Package, okay? So let me put that back over there. So I've downloaded it. Now, let's go to the next step here, the how to use, so let's go to that. So it says, must be 2018 LTS or newer. We are in 2020 the LTS, so that's good, we're all set there. And you have to have a valid URL. Remember, that's the link here. That's the link that we created. Okay, so we have both the things that we need. All right, so you can follow along with these steps here. We're, we'll do that in a moment, but I'm gonna show you everything in video format, so you won't really have to worry about this too much. So we're gonna put this aside. Now, from Unity, there are two ways you can import a package, two standard ways. One, I could just click and drag from off screen and drop it right here in the, in the root of the assets folder. Or you can go up here and say assets. We want to import package, custom package. Now custom in this sense just means this is a package that is not one of the standard ones that comes with Unity. This is one that somebody made, right? So that's fine. So let's click that and it's gonna say, okay, show me where, it, where it's at. So I'm gonna go to my downloads folder and here it is, ready player me right there. 1.5.1, and I'm gonna say open. And you'll see this window pop up. It'll say, you know, preparing. Now it says here, hey, Unity wants to import a package. Here's a list of everything it's gonna import, okay? It's not that much. I know it looks like a lot of individual files, but don't worry about it. The important thing here to notice is none of these are unchecked. So I just always give a little quick browse. Everything looks checked. That's good. That means it's not gonna skip anything. And over here, you notice all these say new. That's because this has never been imported in my packet, into my project before. This package has not been imported into my project before. And so all of these things are new. So now I'm gonna say, okay, import. And it's gonna say, okay, I'm doing that. Here's, here's what I'm doing. You can see this change. It tells you exactly what file, what step it's on. So we're just gonna give that a minute. It really doesn't take long at all. So you can see here it's doing some animations. There's an animation files, and then we're done. And here's the loader. Now. Here's what it looks like. Now, if we were to suddenly, oops, I closed it, okay? Just as an example, how do we get back to it? Oh my God, I closed it, I didn't mean to, where is it? It's at the top here, you'll notice you have these new new things up here. You have Ready Player Me, there's the avatar loader, 
and there's the web view partner editor. Don't worry about that. We're not going to worry with, with that today. Avatar loader. Click that and it comes right back. All good. Okay. So a couple things to note here. From here, this stuff at the bottom is very important. So this reveal animation targets folder and reveal animations folder. So we will be going over how to get a custom animation from Mixamo and brought into here. And that, this will be important for those steps here. So just be aware of those things. Now, these are links to all of their Discord, their blog, the docs, right from here. So if you're having trouble with something, you don't have to remember what the website is or how to get to it. You just click and it goes right to it. That's pretty cool. So right here, you'll notice it says URL or short code. So this is what we want to get our URL from. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to grab my URL and say copied. There we go. Thank you. I'm going to click in here and it'll highlight the whole thing. And I'm going to hit Control V to paste. And you'll see it ends in a .glb. So that's good. Now, you can check this box here for use model caching. This means that if you have the same model, the same avatar throughout multiple things, you click this. And if you make a change to your avatar, it'll be reflected in all. Right now, we don't need that, but just read this here if you need to understand better about what that does. I don't need it for this instance. These two things I'm going to leave checked because we're going to look at these together. These are pretty cool. There's a script for an eye animations, so the character will occasionally blink. Oh, there you go. Optional helper component for random eye rotation and blinking for a less static look. Very good. Then we have the use voiced animation. Optional helper component for voice amplitude to jawbone movement. This is really cool. Now, it's not going to be precise mouth shapes like you would expect to see someone, but their mouth is going to open and close in time with whatever the, the voice thing is. I'll show you that in action as well. All that being done, let's click Load Avatar. And there we go. So now I'll close this for now. And I can zoom over here and see my character. I'm going to disable the lighting in the scene just for now. And there he is. Looks exactly like he did from the website. Perfect. Now let's take a little tour here and take a look at his stuff. When you have the avatar selected, this is what it comes in as. It gives avatar and a number. I'm assuming this is my ID number. I'm the whatever character that's been created. You can rename this. It's just like any object inside of Unity. But note that you can only have one avatar at a time. And if you make changes, we'll see those changes. Okay, I'll show you that as well. Over here, he does have an animator. So he's already animated. If I do nothing else but click play, then you'll see that here he is. And he's animated. He has a little bit of an idle cycle and then he walks for a short distance and he idles again. Now you'll notice that I also have the voice handler is automatically activated. It's automatically activated to my microphone. So you can see his mouth actually moving up and down as I'm talking, recording this video. See? So there's a little bit of a delay, but that's okay. It's probably because I'm recording and it's going through here. But isn't that amazing? It's just set up automatically for you. We'll go over the settings and all that and how to set it up. And there's an, another option you can say, play this based upon an audio clip. So if you don't want the, the audio from a microphone like this one, or you can do more like an NPC, you walk up to them and feed them this audio clip and it can do it that way. All right, very cool. So all that is set up. So where is this in our project now? Let's take a look. So if you go under resources, this is a new folder that would be created if you don't already have it under avatars you'll see this, this uh, file here. So this is an asset file. It's kind of like a prefab, but you'll see it is a .glb, and it comes in as the raw GLB, and the SDK allows Unity to read this and understand it to present the character to us. But now if you were to make a change to your character, you go back to the website, add some sunglasses, say, and then save them out again, copy the link again, come back here and bring them in, you'll see him change here. So you can only have one setup at a time, and if you make changes, it's gonna affect this change here. I'll show you in a future video, there is there is a way around that, and I'm working on a character creator, and it's not officially part of the process, so I'm not gonna really explain in too depth because I don't really wanna show you how to break it. I wanna be respectful to Wolf 3D, and I'm sure they have an idea and a process coming to do kind of a character customization. I just wanted to show what is possible and potentially work with them on doing that if, if they'd like my help with that. So. Here's our character, so let's go ahead and open up the character here and take a look at what we have. One of the really brilliant things about this is the body parts are separated. And what I mean by that is if I hit play, you'll see that the character is animated. And he's, you know, kind of hanging out and then he'll walk. 
I can go over here and choose different body parts, like say his head, his eyes, and let's get his teeth. And I can hide them from Unity. So there you go, Headless Horseman version, right? Now the great thing about this is, this is the perfect way to do something like a first person, full body character controller, because you can put a camera right there, and now you can see your character's arms running in front of you. You look down, you actually see the body of the character you're inhabiting. So that's really cool. And you could also hide it if you say put on a helmet. You could just show the helmet and then hide the rest of this. And the body is just the skin that is shown. So besides the head, any skin that is shown. So that's that. Then you have the outfit bottom as the whole legs minus the boots. So let's bring that back. Footwear is obviously just the boots. So you can swap out boots. Outfit top is everything including the gloves. So just show the skin there. And then he does have teeth, so we can hide the teeth. And he does have two different eyes, so you can hide each eye individually. If you wanted to do different eyes to swap things out, you could do like a, a Thor situation. <laughs> but you notice that it does have the eye blink as well. So let's go back to the avatar proper here. And you can see here, if I close up these things, this eye animation handler. So this is an automatic script that is causing him to blink every so often. So you can change this, you can change it up high. And I guess he'll blink more often, let's see. No, it's not really blinking that much. So maybe it's the higher the number, the less likely is to blink. So we move it all the way down. Let's see, he blinked once there. It's set to a 0.1 value to start with, so you'll have to play with the values back and forth. But you can see that it does a blink for you. So yeah, he's blinking more often now. Now, let's talk about the voice handler stuff for a moment. If you wanted this to play a sound effect instead of the microphone, so let's go ahead and stop play. What you can do here is you can say microphone, change that to audio clip. And now it's going to ask you for an audio clip. Now note, this button will appear here, this test audio clip play button. The problem with this is it only works in play mode. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to call this through script. So I can do a separate video where we talk about that and how to set that up and have a nice easy way to handle that. But for now, they do include a sample audio clip. So if you click here under audio clip, click on the little circle with a dot in it, you'll notice that I have one audio file in the whole project. Let's test ready player me voice handler. So that's a little audio clip there of saying, you know, let's test it out. There you go. So now I'm gonna hit play and you'll notice that his mouth has stopped moving up and down with my voice because I'm set to audio clip now instead of microphone. So now when I click the button, Let's test ready player me voice handler. There you go. So now it'll play that audio clip. So what I can do is show you how to create a script. You can attach to the same object here that will find this stuff and it will, you can call a function to say, go ahead and call this, switch this out and call this. So then we're gonna do a quick little setup and show you in, a, in the next video probably of how to do like an NPC. So you can walk up to them and when you click a button to talk to them, they'll play an audio thing by doing this. So. They've already got that set up for you. It's a really nice setup. Now, one last thing let's take a look at. We're gonna look at the uh, structure here. So if you open this up, these are all the body parts. Then you have the armature. And so let's open up the armature. This is the whole skeleton of the, of the character here. So there's a lot of good stuff in here. He does have a, a top head node. So that's a good spot to spawn things like hats. It's a good offset for hats. He does have for the eyes, all the normal pinkies and toes, all the things you would need. So all of this is all set up, but to do the Mixamo animation, that's a little bit more complicated and we are probably gonna have to handle that next time. Uh, but I'll show you how that works. But in briefly, what we're gonna do is they've provided you a, a resource here under plugins, ready, uh, Wolf 3D Ready Player Me SDK resources. So remember when we looked at the avatar loader right here, it says, Reveal animation targets folder, reveal animations folder. So if you just click that button, it'll take you to it in the uh, in the project structure here. So it'll show you here. So it's under plugins, Wolf 3D, resources, animation targets. So if I follow that here, plugins, Wolf 3D, resources, animation targets. You'll notice that there's a target and a v target V2. Just use the V2 for now. I've noticed that that works best. And what you're gonna do is upload this to Mixamo and then we have to do some settings there. We'll be able to bring that back in. We're going to do that next time. And we're going to talk about the animation controller next time. It does come with a full body controller here. You can see that he just has an idle and a walk. 
But we'll go over how to do a whole thing so we can get your character running around and all set up. Don't worry about that. So we'll handle all that next time because it is a little bit of an involved case. But for now, you have your character here inside of Unity. Direct from the website, you've got your character all set up, uh, your avatar all set up, pardon me, and you have the ability to make changes on the website, pull it in, you have your nice little avatar loader here, you've got access to all the documentation, everything you could possibly need to get your avatars in here and get them all set up. And again, it's just a Unity object now, so you can give it a name. So let's give this name Maps Avatar, right? You can give it a name, you could even make a, let's make a folder. Uh, we will make a prefabs folder, right? And I can drag that in and drop it, and there you go. So now, just like anything else, it's a prefab. So if I were to remove him from the scene, I could spawn him at runtime. There he is. So it's all set up, and they've got all these nice scripts with the eye blinking and the voice handling. So we'll go into a nice example of how to go to Mixamo and get the animations and bring them in here and set up a custom controller so you can walk around with your character. And then we'll also go over how to use this voice handle and I'll make a script for you and show you how it works that we can call that voice handler when we want to, to say, hey, I want my character to talk and say a certain thing. Perfect setup for things like NPCs. So I'll go over that in a video on, on its own. So thanks very much for joining me, guys. I hope that you have enjoyed. If you have any questions, please don't for, uh, feel free to reach out. Don't be afraid to reach out to the Discord for both the Ready Player Me or my Discord, uh, anything. Just reach out and ask me a question. Happy to help. And until next time, guys, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.